At midnight, a floating city longer than four football fields glides past the skyline, carrying over 24,000 containers, enough to stretch for 90 miles if laid end to end. This is the world's largest container ship in 2025, a steel giant so vast that only a handful of ports on Earth can handle its bulk. Yet, for all its power, it relies on a crew of just two dozen and mere meters of clearance beneath its hull. But what does it really take to keep this Leviathan stable, fuel efficient, and on time across unpredictable seas? The numbers are staggering, but the hidden engineering and risk is even greater. Here's what few ever see inside a ship that moves the world. 20-foot equivalent unit, TEU. It's the language of the world's trade, but to most people, it's just a string of letters. On this ship, it means something very real. 24,346 steel boxes, each one the size of a small garage. The numbers are dizzying. Lined up, the containers from a single voyage would stretch for 90 miles, enough to connect New York to Philadelphia. Stack them side by side, and they'd cover eight football fields, end to end with room to spare. The ship itself is nearly 400 meters long, longer than the Empire State Building is tall. Its beam, over 61 meters, matches the width of a six-lane highway, with container stacks rising high above the water, each one locked into place like a moving wall of freight. This is not just a ship. It's a floating city, a freight train, and a skyscraper all at once. Every TEU is a promise. Electronics bound for Europe, fresh fruit from Asia, car parts, shoes, toys, all packed into these uniform boxes. The scale is hard to grasp, a single ship moves more cargo in one trip than an entire fleet could have managed just a generation ago. On deck, the rows seem endless, disappearing into the distance. Below, the hull is packed tight, every centimeter calculated for balance and strength. The numbers matter. They drive the design, the economics, and the limits of global trade. 24,000 containers, each one tracked, stacked, and secured. It's a feat of engineering, but also of imagination, turning a steel rectangle into the backbone of the world's supply chain. The question isn't just how many boxes fit, it's how you move them, how you keep them safe, and what it takes to keep this steel city moving across the sea. Steel makes up the skeleton of the world's largest container ship, a structure almost 400 meters from bow to stern, with a beam stretching 61.3 meters across. The deck alone covers more than two football fields side by side, yet every square meter is engineered for maximum strength. The ship's dead weight tops 230,000 tons, a figure that includes the vessel, its fuel, water, provisions, and most importantly, the cargo itself. Beneath the rows of containers, a hidden grid of cell guides runs the full height of the holds, like a steel filing cabinet on a grand scale. Each guide locks a container into its precise slot, preventing even a centimeter of movement as the ship rolls through open water. Above deck, the stacks rise up to 10 containers high, each one weighing up to 30 tons when fully loaded. The pressure on the lowest boxes is immense, enough to crush a car, so the entire structure is braced by thick steel plates and reinforced hatch covers. Holding it all together are twist locks, simple, rugged devices that connect one container to the next. The ship carries more than 12,000 twist locks, each one designed to withstand hurricane force winds and the constant vibration of the engine below. Lashing rods stretch across the stacks, anchored to lashing bridges that run like catwalks above the deck. These rods, tightened by hand or hydraulic wrench, keep the top tiers from shifting when a North Atlantic storm hits. Every detail is calculated. The maximum stack height, the distance between lashing bridges, the thickness of the hull, all are dictated by the need to balance strength, stability, and cargo density. Push the limits too far, 
and the risk of losing containers grows. But get it right, and the ship becomes a fortress of steel, able to carry 24,000 boxes safely from Shanghai to Rotterdam, season after season. Deep inside the hull, the heart of the ship is a single, slow-turning diesel engine, an engineering giant built to move more than 230,000 tons of steel, cargo, and fuel across the world's oceans. This is not a car engine scaled up. It's a machine that stands taller than a two-story house, stretching nearly 25 meters from end to end. The chief engineer, a veteran of ships half this size, oversees a labyrinth of pipes, gauges, and control screens, all tuned to keep the engine running at just the right rhythm. The main engine is a six-cylinder, two-stroke diesel, built by MAN Energy Solutions. It produces over 75,000 kilowatts, more than 100,000 horsepower, at a steady 80 revolutions per minute. That's enough force to turn an 11-meter propeller, each blade longer than a city bus. The propeller's slow rotation is not a flaw, but a feature. At low speed, it grabs more water with every turn, pushing the ship forward with maximum efficiency and minimal vibration. Every drop of fuel counts. At cruising speed, the engine burns over 10 tons of fuel an hour, but advances in efficiency mean each container moved uses less fuel than ever before. Air lubrication systems pump a curtain of microbubbles along the hull, reducing drag by up to 8%. Special low-friction coatings on the steel skin further cut resistance. Waste heat from the engine is captured and recycled, powering auxiliary systems and heating water for the crew. The engine room is quieter than expected, just a deep, steady thrum punctuated by the hiss of steam and the click of automated valves. The chief engineer's team monitors every variable, oil pressure, exhaust temperature, shaft alignment. One misstep could mean a breakdown, so every reading is checked every hour. Here, beneath thousands of containers, the chief engineer is responsible for the pulse that keeps the world's largest ship alive and moving, day and night, from Shanghai to Rotterdam. Up on the bridge, the world's largest ship is guided by a handful of people. The captain stands at the center of a wide, glass-walled command deck, flanked by navigation officers and watchkeepers. Twenty-two crew run a vessel longer than the Empire State Building is tall, a city in motion, steered by just a few hands and a wall of screens. The bridge is a nerve center, electronic chart display and information systems. ECDIS replace paper charts with glowing digital maps, updating the ship's position in real time. Automatic Identification System, or AIS, broadcasts the vessel's identity, course, and speed to every ship within range. On a busy night, the radar lights up with echoes, tankers, fishing boats, Coast Guard patrols. The officer of the watch scans the horizon, cross-checking every blip against the ECDIS and the AIS feed. Redundant radar units sweep for targets, while alarms stand ready to warn of any collision risk. Routine is everything. The crew works in cycles, four hours on, eight hours off, rotating through watch duties day and night. The captain's day starts before sunrise, checking weather updates, reviewing the next port's approach, and walking the bridge to confer with the chief mate. At noon, the galley serves a hot meal, rice, fish, sometimes a birthday cake if there's cause. Laughter carries down the companionway, but the mood on the bridge stays focused, even during quiet stretches. Every decision is double-checked. The captain consults with the navigation officer before each course change. A wrong turn could mean a delay worth millions. Even with all the automation, it's human judgment that keeps the ship safe, adjusting speed for a fishing fleet ahead, calling the engine room to prepare for a sharp maneuver, 
or watching for the sudden squall that can sweep across the open sea. From the bridge, the bow is a football field away. At night, the only sound is the low hum of electronics and the distant thrum of the engine. The city sleeps, but the bridge never does. A ship this size is always fighting gravity. Stack too many containers high, or load the wrong weight in the wrong bay, and the entire vessel can start to roll like a slow pendulum, dangerous, relentless, impossible to stop by hand. The secret to taming these forces lies in the ship's hidden network of ballast tanks. Dozens of compartments run along the double bottom and deep into the sides of the hull, ready to be filled or emptied with seawater at a moment's notice. The chief engineer stands before a digital ballast control panel, watching a live map of the ship's trim, heel, and metacentric height, the measure of how stubbornly the vessel resists tipping. Every adjustment is calculated. Every ton of water shifted to keep the center of gravity low and the ship upright, even as wind and waves try to push her off balance. Above deck, the battle continues with steel and tension. Each stack is locked down by twist locks and braced with the lashing rods, more than 20,000 rods per voyage, each one rated to withstand the force of a hurricane. Lashing bridges run the width of the ship, giving crew access to secure the highest tiers. But the real muscle comes from software. The ship's stability program simulates every possible loading scenario, checking that the forces on each rod and twist lock stay within safe limits. It's a living calculation, updated with every container loaded or discharged, every ballast tank pumped. One miscalculation and the ship could roll too far, risking cargo loss or worse. The chief engineer's vigilance is the last line of defense, a constant, silent guard against the physics that threaten to topple this moving city. Twelve nautical miles from port, the pilot boat races alongside, matching speed with the world's largest container ship. The harbor pilot stands ready, helmet strapped, eyes fixed on the towering hull. In this moment, centuries of seafaring tradition meet the scale of 2025, a single person climbing a rope ladder, about to take charge of a floating city. The wind whips across the deck as the pilot boards, greeted by the captain and escorted straight to the bridge. Here, the handover is quiet but absolute. The pilot's voice comes steady over the radio. Reduce RPM to standby. Prepare for tugs on both sides. Two tugboats close in, dwarfed by the ship's beam, each one capable of delivering over 80 tons of pulling force. Their masters coordinate by radio, every move rehearsed but never routine. With the main engine turning at controlled revolutions, the pilot calls for a slow swing to starboard. The tugs push in unison, pressing their rubber bows against the steel hull, holding the ship steady against wind and current. Any miscalculation here, a slip, a surge, a late command, could drive 230,000 tons of ship off course, risking disaster for ship and port alike. On the bridge, the pilot's commands are clipped and precise. Port, tug, push full. Starboard, ease. Helm, midships. The ship answers slowly, her momentum a force of nature. As the bow aligns with the channel entrance, the tugs back off, engines churning white water. The ship inches forward, guided by human judgment and machine muscle, threading the needle into the world's busiest terminal. The city is now in the hands of the harbor, every second, every meter, a test of coordination and trust. Five cranes line the quay, their booms arcing out over the world's largest container ship like the arms of a mechanical orchestra. Each crane towers nearly 60 meters above the dock, built to reach across 24 rows of containers and pluck steel boxes from the highest stacks. The operator sits in a glass cab, suspended above the ship, joystick in hand. Every move is logged, every box tracked, 
In the control room, the terminal operations manager watches a wall of screens, monitoring crane cycles and yard traffic in real time. The target, up to 35 moves per crane every hour for a total of more than 5,000 container exchanges before the ship sails again. Below, a fleet of automated guided vehicles, AGVs, waits for their cue. As soon as a container touches down, an AGV glides into position, lifts the box, and whisks it away to the yard. There, automated stacking cranes sort and store hundreds of containers at a time, guided by algorithms that optimize every meter of space and every second of movement. The choreography is relentless. Cranes, AGVs, and yard machines working in sync, each one feeding the next, never pausing. A single misstep, a late AG-5, a misplaced box, cascades through the operation, threatening the ship's tight turnaround window. In this world, speed and precision are everything. The ship cannot afford delays. Every container must be in the right place, at the right time, or the entire supply chain feels the impact. The terminal operations manager's job is to keep the flow unbroken, a dance of steel and software that connects the sea to the land and the world to its goods. The world's largest container ship traces a route that defines the boundaries of engineering and trade. From Shanghai, she steers for Singapore, then heads west toward the Suez Canal, a channel just wide enough for her 61-meter beam and dredged to a depth of 16.1 meters to let giants like this pass. The Suez sets the hard limits, 400 meters long, 61 meters across, 16 meters deep. Go a meter wider, and the voyage ends at the canal's edge. On this ocean highway, every knot of speed is measured against fuel and emissions. Logistics planners, armed with real-time weather and port data, set the ship's pace for maximum efficiency. Slow, steaming, cruising at 16 to 18 knots, cuts fuel use by up to 40% compared to older, faster runs. The main engine burns very low sulfur fuel oil, and hybrid scrubbers strip out most of the sulfur before the exhaust ever hits the sky. On some ships, dual fuel engines stand ready for LNG or methanol when the infrastructure catches up. Each voyage becomes a balancing act. Keep the schedule tight, slash emissions, and squeeze every possible saving from the scale. The numbers tell the story. A 24,000 TEU ship offers a 35% cost edge per container over a 14,000 TEU vessel, if every box is filled. But the edge comes with limits. Only a handful of ports can handle ships this size, and the Suez Canal's dimensions draw a clear line under how much bigger these ships can get. Shipyards are now studying wider hulls and greener engines, but the next leap will demand more than just steel and fuel. It will take a new vision for what global shipping can be. In 2025, the MSC Arena set a new record at 24,346 TEU and nearly 400 meters in length, a scale that dwarfs even the largest skyscrapers and redefines what a ship can be. This documentary has shown how decades of engineering advances, from slow-speed diesel engines to sophisticated ballast control and port automation, made such vessels possible. Yet, not all questions are settled. Exact cost breakdowns, full emissions data, and the upper limits of feasible ship size remain partly classified or unshared by operators and regulators. What is clear, based on shipping records and Port Authority reports, is that only a handful of ports worldwide can serve these giants, and their impact on trade routes, fuel use, and infrastructure is profound. As the world's largest container ships sail between continents, their existence marks both the triumphs and the challenges of global logistics in 2025. Yeah.